Yo guys, what's up? It is Ripe again. I hope you are all doing well and I know you are here for some more juicy revenge stories. In today's video we will read stories from r slash petty revenge, regular revenge and pro revenge. The last story is especially juicy because a douchebag neighbor decides to steal firewood from a poor family. So without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, Don't wake me up with a generator and then steal my electricity. A construction crew has been replacing all the decks and railing at our larger apartment complex over the last few months. It's been a bit of a pain because they have taken up a lot of the extra parking spots intended for visitors and tenants with second vehicles. They also usually start at 7.30 am unless it rained the day before, in which case they start at 6.30 am, which would be obnoxious, but with the stay at home order it's gotten to be hard to work or take a nap. I'm the guy with the extreme record every he comes off of mute. And I gotta admit I did not understand that sentence. Anyway, being in a rather cantankerous mood after having been woken up for the up 10th time by a generator starting well before my first meeting of the day, I look out the window to see a drills battery plugged into a socket I know is associated with my apartment. So without a second thought, I go to my breaker box and turn off the appropriate breaker. I sincerely hope some inconvenience came of it. And guys, I gotta say, this story reminds me of a story that a friend of mine once told me and I think this one really fits the story. So my friend in the past, he lived in a house where the landlord was building an RV storage garage onto the back of the house. So he worked a bunch of different shifts and one of which was 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. which by the way was absolutely soul crushing. So they would start working around 7 a.m. every morning. The problem was that he, my friend, was also going to school around this time. So he had to get up around 10 or 11 a.m. to make it to class. The problem was that the guys building the garage were using the power from his house. They would basically overload the circuit causing the breaker to trip, causing his alarm clock to turn off. So they would reset the breaker, but the time on his alarm clock would be off so he would not wake up for class in time. Basically he had to get angry with the landlord before he finally got those guys to stop using his electricities. And suffice to say, those were difficult times for him. I forgot to mention, the first one was from r slash petty revenge and since it was so short, the second is also from r slash petty revenge. It is titled, Try to elbow your way to the front at a gig? I guess I will just sing to every song. This was a few years ago in Spain. I just happened to find out that one of my favorite bands were playing a gig on the other side of the country from where I was living. As the gig was on my birthday weekend, I figured, why not? So I found someone else who wanted to go, we organized it all and planned for a fun weekend of sightseeing and music. Fast forward to the gig itself, we got there at a good time so we could grab a drink and find a good spot to watch the stage. Just as the band came on, two Spanish girls started elbowing their way towards the stage, deciding to stop just in front of me. Which was pretty infuriating as they were also holding their phones up to video the band, blocking my view. Now I know every song of this band and I have a singing voice like a cat being washed, so I hit upon a perfect revenge. Every time this girl tried to film, I would sing along at the top of my voice. Every damn song, as well as singing along into her ears just for fun. I ended up having a great time when avoiding her elbows and she has zero video without my voice in it. You know guys, I gotta say, I'm usually not the person that goes to many concerts, but strangely enough, in this case, I can totally relate to this story. In addition, I would say this story reminds me of certain cinema experiences I had in the past. What I mean is, especially in Europe and even sometimes here in Thailand, some people feel the need to talk on the phone while they are in the cinema or some even put their feet up on the like seat in front of them. By the way, fun little fact that you probably did not know about Thailand, if you go to the cinema here, they have like a little propaganda movie about the king and while this little propaganda movie plays before the movie, everybody has to stand up. If you don't stand up, I think you would get in trouble. 
By the way guys, let me know in the comments, when was the last time that you went to a cinema? Did you ever encounter a douchebag there that put And the next one is from r slash regular revenge comments. and is titled Gave a rude client exactly what she asked for, she got fired as a result. I work at a software company where we have long-term relationships with a small number of client companies. Recently, a new person started working at one of our client companies and called to report a software bug that was not actually a bug. This happens a lot because the software is huge and complicated and needs a lot of regular configuration changes. Usually we can just explain the issue to the customer and they are good. Not this woman though, she was rude to my coworker and told him that he had no idea what he was talking about. Then she yelled at my boss and insisted on talking to my boss's boss about the issue when my boss would not give in and fix the bug. I've never seen anything like this in my 5 years with the company, she continued complaining up the chain until it hit the company owner. Per the owner, we gave in and made the change she wanted. It was a time consuming fix that no one wanted to do, but they are our customers so we had to give in. Plus, the issue was primarily cosmetic, so it was unlikely any other customers would complain. A few weeks later, we presented the updated software patch to the customer's other employees, as they will need to apply it. The customers absolutely freak out. They ignored all their emails and apparently failed to realize that we had given in to the woman's demands even though we made her boss sign off on it. They refused to take the patch. Now the customer has some options, they can pay us above our usual rate to back out the change or they can apply it and deal with the change. Our patches are cumulative, and please correct me if I pronounce that incorrectly, so they cannot get around it by skipping one. We are not making any more changes like this for our usual rate. We are still waiting on their decision, but when sending another email this week, my boss noticed that the irate woman's email bounced. My boss asked in the weekly conference call if the woman's email address had changed. There was utter silence for 10 seconds and then the woman's boss said that she was no longer with the company. They all seemed a little embarrassed about the whole thing. Malicious compliance works. And guys, to be honest, after hearing stories like this, I just cannot imagine working a job like tech support. Me personally, I'm pretty good with IT, but I can just not imagine dealing with such entitled people on a daily basis. Please let me know in the comments, have any of you ever worked in a call center and maybe even tech support? Let us know your experiences with entitled people in the comments. And you know, that reminds me, someone should actually do a ranking list about the jobs where you have to deal with the most entitled people. And I suppose a call center job would be pretty high up on the list. And furthermore, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments and also like the video if you want to support me. Thank you very much. And the next one is titled, Neighbor's Living Room Exploded for Stealing Firewood. This is a story about my neighbors and was relayed to me through my dad since I was too young to remember any of it. In the early 90s, my family lived in a lower middle class neighborhood. Our neighbors were very poor with about 5 kids, but extremely nice. They could not afford heating to be installed in their house, so they relied on using firewood the father got from some of his friends at work during the winter. Winter came and their father started using the firewood. After a few weeks of freezing temperatures, he started to notice that every night some of his firewood would go missing. Now, we had these other neighbors who were not the greatest, and by that I mean they were complete a-holes. They had frequent police visits for noise violations and god knows what else. They let their kids throw rocks at passing cars and they were pretty well known for having stolen from other neighbors in the past. So back to the family having their firewood stolen. After about a week of firewood going missing, the father went over to the a-hole house and asked if they had been taking the firewood. They denied it and seeing as there was not anything the father could do about it legally, he came up with a plan. He found the nicest piece of wood he could find, drilled a hole in it, filled it with those quarter stick of dynamite fireworks from earlier that year, glued the hole shut and placed the piece of wood at the top of his wood pile. Surely enough, the piece of wood was gone the next day. About a week later, the neighborhood was woken up by a big bang and the a-hole kids running out of the house exclaiming, Our fireplace just exploded! 
Luckily, no one was injured. My dad tells me that when he looked outside, the a-hole neighbors had what he describes as a looney tunish hole in their chimney with soot all over their lawn and presumably their family room. And guys, I gotta say, that is a pretty genius way of pro revenge and if you ask me, that a-hole family totally deserved it. Honestly, I don't even follow these guys' lines of thinking. I mean, if you see a poor family, why would you steal their firewood? If it was me, I would have probably given them firewood instead. And by the way, guys, I'm curious, you can let us know in the comments, what was the harshest slash coldest winter that you have ever experienced? Personally, for me, when I look back to around maybe 2003, 2002, we probably had winters where it was around minus maybe 8 degrees, minus 10 degrees, and that was already pretty damn cold. But I know some of you guys come from parts of the US where it gets really, really damn cold. So let us know in the comments, what was your worst winter? And the last one is from r slash pro revenge and is titled Noisy Resort Neighbor Gets His Secret Spilled. Happened a few days ago, throw away for obvious reasons. My wife and I decided to go to Southern California for the holidays. We found ourselves a nice resort and checked in. All was well until we noticed that the walls in our room were very thin. As we entered our room we could hear our next door neighbor talking and having an argument with his girlfriend. We shared one common wall with them, they were shouting pretty loud and we could hear everything through the wall. We will refer to this guy as noisy neighbor NN, NN kept fighting with his girlfriend about something she said earlier. We did not follow, were not interested and decided to go eat and explore around the town we were in. We came back around 10 at night and all was quiet. We figured that NN and his girlfriend already went to bed, so we went to bed as well. Turns out, he was out. NN and his girlfriend come back at 12, laughing and really loud. Loud to the point that we could hear them and hear their entire conversation. Looks like they made up after the fighting that morning. We hear the girlfriend say that she is hungry and NN calls for pizza delivery. It was there that we heard NN's name, phone number and credit card info. Not that we would do anything with it, they kept chatting and laughing and we could hear every bit of their conversation through the thin walls. Wife and I try earplugs, radio and everything we could think of to drown out the noise. We were hoping that they would eventually turn in for the night and there would be some peace and quiet. Yet NN was full of energy and boyish laughter. Finally at 2 am we decided to call the concierge and let the resort security deal with it. The resort we stayed at was meant for mindfulness and mediation, so it did enforce some quiet hours. Security called them up and told them that they were too loud and to keep their voices down. This did the trick for some time and we fell asleep. Only to be woken up again at around 5am to some really loud intercourse. Like moaning and screaming from the girlfriend, after they were done with their business, they washed up and just kept talking. Laying there in bed, I heard all about NN's job, where he was from, where he grew up, his political views and so on. Finally at 6 or so, we called up the front desk again, this time security actually came and knocked on their door to tell them to keep their voices down as it was still officially quiet hours. NN and his girlfriend were furious that they could be disturbed when they were just having fun and having a good time. They claimed that they were not loud at all and why can't they just have some fun. They threatened to leave poor reviews for the resort and made sure that all of their friends would hear about this. Security took that all in, gave them their warning and left. After security left, NN and his girlfriend started talking crap about wife and me through the wall knowing that we could hear it. Stuff like, our neighbors are such a-holes, probably racial slur. What's wrong with intercourse with my girlfriend, huh? Too loud for you? And just deliberately talked to his girlfriend in a really loud voice, talking about how great the intercourse was and how she was going to scream and moan louder next time. I was frustrated at this time with very little sleep. I took out my cell phone and recorded everything that we were hearing, hoping to show the front desk just how little soundproof the room was and hopefully ask for a room change. But then something happened. At 7 or so, we heard NN's phone ring and suddenly NN and GF were really silent. Then I hear NN say, Hi, NN's wife. How are you, sweetie? I just woke up here at the conference. Long day ahead. I miss you so much. 
It turns out NN was cheating on his wife with his mistress over Christmas. At this point my wife and I hatched a plan. With all the information that we had on NN, his wife's name and where they lived, we started combing Facebook and yellowpages.com for more information. Lo and behold, we found what NN looked like, old man in his 50s, and his wife. All the information matched up with what we had been talking about all night and plus his zip code when he ordered pizza. A bit more digging and we found where NN's wife worked and her email address. A simple outlook.com email address later, I compressed the recording I had and sent it to NN's wife. The best part is that the recording contained NN's wife's phone call to NN, so she had no doubt it was definitely NN. Exhausted with little sleep, my wife and I decided to just get up and go get some breakfast around town. We come back a few hours later and stop by the concierge desk. We wanted to thank them and their security for trying to help us get some sleep and to ask for another room. Turns out we did not need a room switch. Um, they checked out this morning, a few days earlier than scheduled, the concierge told us. She mentioned something about an urgent family concern that NN had to attend to. Looks like our plan had worked much better than we had hoped for. The rest of our stay at the resort was quiet and uneventful. No one else checked into that room, I did show the front desk parts of my recording just so they know that they need to work on soundproofing their rooms in the future. And guys after hearing this story I'm curious, have you ever had to deal with noisy neighbors? Personally for me it is very important to not have noisy neighbors obviously because the microphone I have is pretty sensitive so even if our neighbor mows the lawn I can pretty much hear everything of that in my microphone recording. That is really an issue for me so also when I go to Thailand to my girlfriend usually I rent an Airbnb apartment or something and when I'm un unlucky the neighbors are pretty loud sometimes. But I guess you cannot really avoid that if you don't pay much for the apartment. Also, from what I can tell, here in Thailand, if your neighbor is loud, you cannot really do much. The culture is not really confrontational in a way where you would tell them to shut the hell up to be quiet. Instead, you would just basically do nothing. I guess in Western countries, that is a little bit different. And with that, we have reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's content. And if you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to join our amazing community. Furthermore, don't forget to go to r slash ripe stories on reddit to post your own stories if you want me to read them out in a video. I hope you have a fantastic day and I see you again tomorrow.